In this video, we're going to talk about wedding dances. Are they for you? Should you dance at your wedding? Do you need wedding dance performers? And is the first wedding dance important? Hi guys, it's Simba. Welcome back to KSIM Speaks, the channel where we talk about everything that is wedding related. We give you the best wedding advice, ideas and tips, the best bridal dances, and how to make your wedding a success. Before we begin, we upload videos every week, so be sure to click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss when we drop a new video. Alright, let's get straight into the action. There are three types of wedding dances. Bridal dance, first couple dance, open dance floor. Take note, there's no specific order for these dances. Any part of it may be changed according to the need and taste of the master of ceremony or the couple. Bridal dances vary depending on where you are on the continent. In some countries, it may not be that important. However, this is the key part of the wedding. The bride and groom usually spend between one to three months practicing for their big day. In my home country, the bridal party usually have three sets of dances that take place at random intervals as the wedding day progresses. Bridal dances are mostly done to keep the wedding guests entertained and in high spirits. After the introduction of the bride and the groom, and the rest of the wedding party, the bride and the groom share the first dance. Many brides and grooms practice this dance before the wedding because they know everyone will be watching. For the next dance, the father of the bride dances with the bride, and the groom dances with the bride's mother. After that, the bride's father dances with their mother, and the groom asks the mother to dance, and then the groom's parents dance with each other. For the first dance, choose a song that you love, and the one that speaks to the relationship between the bride and the groom. Practice dancing to the song before the wedding. If either of you has little or no experience on the dance floor, take a lesson from a choreographer. If your wedding dress is long or has a tail, make sure you don't trip over it. Wear shoes that are comfortable for dancing. If you aren't used to high heels, wear lower heels or flats. During the wedding reception, the dance floor will be restricted to a few people giving speeches or gifts only. And usually those who dance are either by request or are officially on the wedding program. And chances you might be asked to pay to dance before it is time for everyone to do so. An open dance floor is when the master of ceremony allows everyone to grace the dance floor and dance their hearts out without any interruptions. Open dance floor dances usually happen towards the end of the wedding after most of the things have been concluded. A wedding is an event full of traditions and symbols. The first dance of the newly married couple is one of those honored traditions that is highly cherished. The first dance is considered as the official opening of dancing by the newly married couple, and the first dance between the bride and the groom is the most awaited moment by the guests. It shows the love and unity between the new couple. Many of the most popular first dance songs are over 3 to 4 minutes long. 
Although three minutes does not seem to be a long time, when you are the only couple on the dance floor, it can seem like an eternity, especially if you are not well prepared. The optimum time for a first dance should be 2 to 2 minutes 30 long, unless if the guests pay for you to dance longer than that. On top of bridal dances, you can also add wedding performers. This can keep your guests entertained during breaks or lunch time. When it comes to planning wedding entertainment, most couples simply rely on the DJ. In addition to these forms of entertainment that have nothing to do with musical instruments or singing, these performers can actually help with your celebration. A wide range of performers are available for wedding events, and hiring them can take your wedding from exciting and beautiful to memorable and extraordinary. Examples include dancers, singers, comedians, and so forth. Speaking of bridal dances, we made a wedding dance playlist for you that has all the dance action in one place. You can see the playlist by clicking the link up here. You do not have to dance at your wedding if you don't want to. Be prepared to include other activities so that your guests don't get bored. Even if it is about 20 to 30 people, sitting around for 5 hours is no fun. If the guests want you to dance, you may not have the option to refuse, since some might actually fork out money for you to do so. If you want to, yes. If not, then no. If you can afford private dance lessons, and you are so inclined, dance lessons are a brilliant way to pull off the wedding dance of your dreams. Wedding dance styles should be related to your country for people to relate. However, sometimes people adopt other dance cultures in order to surprise their guests. Don't be limited when it comes to this. Experiment and try out different ideas so as to make your day fun. Not all people can dance or are born to dance. So you will hear them saying I have two left feet, so I will not dance. Remember, this is your wedding day, so whether you can dance or not, people will want to see you dance no matter how badly you dance. You should make an effort. The wedding day only takes place once and you have nothing to lose. Let me know down in the comments below, will you dance at your wedding day or not? If you are on your journey to become married, feel free to check out our other videos. And if you have other video suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.